All right, so student, in the previous video, we um, covered, like, roughly covered the basic concept on confidence interval. And also we talked about some, some um, terms uh, that you will see very often in this part. All right, so I think I stop at here, where in this part, they ask you to retrograde to see how, <coughs> how to get the valid object. And they ask you to find out the 95% confidence interval. So just to recall back, um, when they want you to find the confidence interval, right, usually they will give you a percentage here. So this percentage <coughs> we call it as confidence in the uh, confidence level. Confidence level. All right. So now we are going to learn how this confidence level will affect our calculation for confidence limits. Okay, right. So I will just go through very um, quickly first to recall what have we covered in the previous video. Okay, so generally we talk about the confidence interval in this part. All right. So for confidence interval, it is actually an interval with value A and also value B. Okay, so for value A, to get the confidence limit A, the formula is actually sample mean minus Z multiplied with sigma over square root N. And then for B, it is actually sample mean plus Z sigma divided by square root n. So this is how we get the value for a and b in a confident interval. All right, But in the question itself, usually they will also give you a percentage <coughs> such as 95% like what we have in our notes or maybe 99%. They can also even ask you to find the 80% confident interval. But all the percentage here usually is quite close to 100%. percent one All right. Okay, so now uh, you need to know that the percentage huh, actually will affect all the value of Z. So the values of Z in your confident interval will be affected by all the percentage given in the question. All right, so now what is the meaning of all this percentage here? So generally you can imagine if let's say they want you to find out a 95% confidence interval, that means that uh, they actually want you to have an area in the normal distribution where in the middle part here it is 95% or 0 0.95. And therefore this part and also this part, you want to make sure that all of them add together become 1 or 100%. So if you try to do some calculation, this one will be 0 0.025 and this part will be 0 0.025 as well. So that when you try to total all of them, you'll get 100% of the total value is equals to 1. Okay, so now that is actually the limit okay, of this part. All right, can you see that? So you will see that for a 95% confidence interval, if you want to find out the value of Z, you need to look for the area for this whole part here. Okay, so which means when you are having Z smaller than Z, it is equal to 0 0.975 because the value below the Z is the whole area. Yeah, so again, just to remind you all, when they are asking for 95% confident interval and you want to get the value of Z, you are not looking at 95%, but you are looking at 0 0.975. Okay, all right. So how can I get the value for 0 0.975? So here I try to copy out the normal distribution table uh, from our um, formula booklet but I modify it a bit already. Lah. So now, usually for confidence level, I will tell students, if can, you try to look for the value from here first. 
Okay, if let's say there's no value that you want from here, then only you refer back to the main table on top. So as an example, we are looking for 0 0.975, right? So if you look for 0 0.975, when the probability is 0 0.975, very straightforward and easily you will get the value of Z. Right? So the value of Z will be 1.96. Therefore, for a 95% confidence interval, the value of Z is actually 1.96. Alright, so this is a very, very first step that you need to know okay, how to get the correct value of Z according to the percentage that they give you. Alright, okay, so you need to imagine that you're having a graph in your mind like this, huh? that only you graph in know what is the value that you should refer to the web when you are using the normal distribution table. Okay, all right. So maybe you can discuss some other example. Okay, in example 19. All right, so for example 19, they want you to find the exact value for the following confidence interval. Okay, so I will discuss it with you for the first one. 90%. All right, so to get the exact value for 90% confidence interval, in your mind, you should imagine that there's a normal distribution table, and then in the middle part here, they, are, uh, they want to have the value of 90, 90% or 0.90. Okay, so if you try to do some basic calculation, the rest of the area should be 0 0.1, right? And then 0 0.1, when you divide it by two equal size, that it will become 0 0.05 on the right and also 0 0.05 on the left. So that when you total all of them up, it becomes 1. So from here, you will, you will see that one value is negative z, another value is z, right? Because they are symmetry to each other. Therefore, when you want to refer to the value of z, you need to refer to the whole area below the z. Why we need to refer whole area below the z? It is because of our formula booklet. Nah? The normal distribution they provide us the area on the right left hand side okay, of the z. So you need to refer to this whole value. So what's the total value here? The area. So the area is 0 0.95. Okay, so for a 90% confident interval, when you want to get the value of z, you are referring to the area of 0 0.95. So again, refer to your normal distribution where is 0 0.95. I will look at the small table here first. Very easily I see that there's a 0 0.95 here which means that the z value will be 1.645. So in this case I will put the value of z which is equals to 1.645. Alright, so I hope that you have the idea how to do it. Okay, so maybe for me, I will try another example. I will try part 3 for you. Then you try the rest later. Alright. Okay, so 97% confidence interval. <coughs> Sorry. So again, in your mind, you try to imagine the graph with 97%. The probability of 97, 0 0.97. Or 97% in the middle of the area of the graph and then you left 0 0.03 for both area here so 0 0.03 if we divide it by 2 then you have 0 0.015 and this is also 0 0.015 double check again and see when you total all of them up it becomes equals to 1 that should be no problem. Okay, so this is your negative z and this is your z. I want to get the value of z for this confidence interval. So to get the value of z, you need to refer to the whole area on the left hand side of the z. So what is the area here? So the area for the z is actually 0 0.985. Alright, so to get the value of z, you need to look for the area of 0 0.985. Okay, so again, if you refer back to the table, okay, so in the small table here, there's no value like 0 0.985. Therefore, with no other choice, you have to refer back to the main table on top. 
and please look for 0 0.985. So again, I will try to figure out the nearest. Oh, okay, so we have a very nice value here. The 0 0.985, if you read through it, what is the value for the Z? You get 2.17. All right, so from here, very easily, you will see that the value of Z for 97%, the value of Z is equals to uh, 2.17. Okay, so I hope that you get an idea of how we get the value of Z, okay, according to the different, uh, how to say, different percentage, the different confidence level. Okay, all right, so I show you two examples here already. So to test your understanding, you can try part number two and part number four. Okay, and then uh, for the example here, right, I draw the normal table. Sorry, I draw the normal graph for you to understand, to let you understand how you get a value of Z. In the exam, you no need to show all this. You can straight away imagine the graph in your mind and then you straight away get the value of Z from the table will do. Alright, so I draw it out here so that you can you can visualize it, uh, 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 what happened to the area and so on. Okay, uh, so in exam you need to draw all this up. Okay, alright, so I will just give you the answer for part number two and also the part number four. Part number two, if you didn't do any careless mistake, the value of Z should be 2.5. Seven six, and then for part number four, we will have z equals to one point eight one one, or if you try to write out one point eight one two, also will be accepted. All right, okay. So uh, please try to figure it out and see whether you understand this part or not before you continue to the next video to calculate the confidence interval. All right, so I'll stop here for this video for now.